Happy Friday. Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and this is the Two Truths and a Lie Challenge. This is the latest incarnation of the ongoing internet feud between me and Emma Tobias. I will link below to a playlist of all of our Love Hate Challenge videos we've done so far where we make each other read a book that we loved and a book that we hated and the other person has to guess which one was which and as well we also make them watch a movie we loved and hated and listen to a song we loved and hated, so on. We are now ramping it up. This is the Love Hate Challenge Two Truths and a Lie edition. I feel like the camera is way too close to me. What that means, if you haven't played Two Truths and a Lie, is that instead of giving each other two things from each media category, we have given each other three things we actually recorded videos telling the other person why we loved each of these things so much, but one of those reasons was a lie. So if you want to see me lying to Emma's face, I will link below to her version of this video. In this one, you are gonna watch Emma lie to my face and me struggle to figure out where the lie was. So let's do this. Overall, Emma gave me a nostalgia theme. I was revisiting songs, books, and movies from her childhood. Let's begin with the songs. This is the video that Emma sent me. Hi, Emma. This is so fun. I love lying, and I love lying. So I think this is going to be really good for us. Let's start off with songs. I chose three country songs because you know this, but maybe other people don't know this. I grew up in rural South Carolina. I was quite the yeehaw child, and through practice and purpose, I got rid of my little southern accent that I had as a kid. I loved being a southern girl. I was a grit, a girl raised in the south, and I spent all of my time outside being yeehaw, so the music reflects this. The three songs I have for you are Our Town by Montgomery Gentry, which I always have to say like that because my speech impediment makes it really hard for me to say that without using a thick southern accent. This song is about these two fellows singing about their town. I loved this song as a kid. I still love this song. It reminds me so much of my hometown. It's just a lot of fun. It's a good feeling. It's just, it's great. It's great in the video, it's great, and I would recommend watching the video. Next we have Live Like You Were Dying by Tim McGraw. This song came out when I was a kid and we would ride home from school on the bus and all of us like fourth graders would be like scream singing, live like you were dying, just really, really loud, which probably annoyed the bus driver, but we were having a great time. So I loved that memory, it's so sweet. Next we have Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. I went tubing down the Chattahoochee River many times when I was a kid, and this song got played on tiny little radios that would be attached to the rubber tubes, and I feel like that was probably really dangerous, but it was the perfect background music to be going down the Chattahoochee, Chattahoochee River in the middle of July sweating and eating boiled peanuts. So, based on that, before I went and listened to the songs myself, I had initial predictions. The only one of those songs that I already knew was Live Like You Were Dying by Tim McGraw, which was a song that I really liked when I was a teenager. So, initially I predicted that it would be one of the other two that she hated, and I went for Chattahoochee, because the context that she said she heard it in, like, listening to it all the time tubing, it made me think of like the songs that are playing all the time when you go to Thought Park or like at a theme park and there's some annoying kids song playing on repeat in the background and by the end of the day you never want to hear it again. So my initial prediction was that for that reason she wouldn't actually like the song Chattahoochee. Here is a vlog of me listening to the songs and then we'll see if my thoughts changed. All right, let's have a soundtrack to my breakfast. We are going to start with, what was the first one she said? My Town by Montgomery Gentry. Hi, I just think I'm here to say that I can't play the actual songs I'm listening to in this video because of copyright reasons. So instead, I am putting a royalty-free track over the top that I got from the free YouTube audio library. It is a country track called COVID Come Not Near. So enjoy that. I already hate it, I think. Okay, weird vibe there. Weird mix of vibes. The beginning, 
was very unexpected. It started sounding maybe like the intro to like a Celine Dion song. And I was a big Celine Dion fan as a kid, but it wasn't expected. Then in came the country part. I kind of liked it and then it got boring, boring, boring verse. Suddenly the chorus hit and I was like, oh my God, I feel so much hometown pride for my small American town that I grew up in. I didn't, I didn't do that. That didn't happen. So really don't know what to make of that song. Half hate, half fantastic. Uh, let's move on to Timbergraw. This is the song that I do know. When Taylor Swift first released her song Tim McGraw, that I'm ashamed to say was the first time I'd ever heard of Tim McGraw, but I then got really into this one particular song, Live Like You Were Dying. Okay, so that made me feel very nostalgic. I remember singing that a lot when I was at school. I mean, it's a classic, it's a great song. I'd be surprised if it was the one that Emma hated, but funny enough, I feel like. I now don't want to listen to it anymore. I'm done with it. It was cute at the time. It's too cheesy for me now. Famous last words. I bet by the end of the week I'll be singing it on repeat. Let's have the final song. Chattanooga River or whatever it's called. Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. <laughs> well, that was a blast. Can definitely imagine playing that while tubing down the river. Not that I've ever been tubing, but I get the gist. I just remembered that I was supposed to be watching the music video for My Towns. So I'm gonna watch that now. The video skipped the weird Celine Dion-esque intro, so that was definitely an improvement. Also, this is a cute video. It's almost like home movie style. I feel emotional about living in this town. Having listened to them all again, I think having a school bus full of kids singing Live Like You Were Dying every day would be super fucking annoying. So, it is time for final predictions. I am still feeling really unsure. This camera is like completely on an angle, I just realized. Anyway, ignoring that, I'm still feeling completely unsure about this. I do feel convinced that Emma does love the song My Town because even I feel really nostalgic about it and I only heard it for the first time a week ago. So I'm torn between the other two, but I really enjoyed the Chattahoochee one. I thought it was fun. So I'm gonna go rogue as someone who did love the song, Live Like You Were Dying. And I'm going to predict that Emma actually hates that song. It's a little overdone. It's a little cliche. I've got Emma's answers right here. She's recorded me another video. So let's find out the truth. I get these wrong basically every time. Oh my god, I have to tell you. If I lied or I had told the truth now. This is intense. So, let's start off with songs. What is the song I loved? Or the songs that I loved? And what is the song that I hated? I hope you figured it out. The songs that I love are Our Town by Montgomery Gentry and Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. I love these songs. I think they're so much fun. I still think they're really fun. I will listen to them happily in a car anytime, any day, blasting it. I hate the song. <laughs> Look like you were dying. I hate the song because I was quite an existential child. And so when we were scream singing this on the bus, I would just get really depressed and think about like death and I hated it and I think I still have those residual feelings about this song. It's like a YOLO before YOLO. I just, not for me, not for me. I am so thrilled. I so rarely get these right and that felt like a brave choice for me so I'm glad I pulled it off. Okay, next movies. Here are the three movies that Emma told me to watch and the reasons that she told me for why she loves them. Okay, Let's do movies next. I want like a Disney Channel Halloween vibe. I love Halloween. Love Disney. So the first thing I have is the Haunted Mansion movie with Eddie Murphy, which is based on the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World slash Disneyland. I loved this movie. A lot of people have bad feelings about it, but I think it's really fun and it captures the ride really well. And also Eddie Murphy is just a good time in this movie and I love it. Next we have Halloween Town High. I didn't choose Halloween Town 1 or Halloween Town 2. I chose Halloween Town High because when this movie came out, I really wanted to be in high school. I feel like you hit that age when you're a preteen, when you're like, I just want to be in high school. I just want to be with all the big kids. And this movie combined that desire for me and also the fact that all the Halloween Town characters came to high school and it still has the original Marnie in it. And it's just really cute and fun and very sweet. And then Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. This is a Disney Channel original movie starring one of the 
response from uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the original show. And I loved this. Also the dad from The Nanny. Anyway, I loved this. I thought it was like the most fun. I love the part with the spoon or the fork. Like if a spoon can't like get on his nose, it means he's not a vampire or something like that. Huge fan of this growing up. So based on that, my initial prediction was that the lie was going to be that she liked Halloween Town High because it's number three in a series. And I feel like usually by number three in a series, the movies have gone pretty downhill. Also, side note, I love the way Emma pronounces Halloween. It makes me smile every time. So yeah, I was initially predicting that Emma would have actually disliked Halloween Town High, even though the only one of these movies that I previously knew was The Haunted Mansion. I saw that at the cinema on a school trip when it first came out, and I remember thinking it was really shit. But I don't know anything about Disney World, and Emma's reasoning about the movie being a really good representation of the ride like sounded convincing. So that was my first prediction, but here is the vlog of me watching the films. I keep having to retake this because RG eats very loudly, but we're, we're going to watch Haunted Mansion on Disney+. Plus. I've seen this movie before, once, at the cinema in 2003. I thought it was really bad at the time. RG's going to love it because you like Eddie Murphy, right? Do you love it? Do you love Eddie Murphy? <laughs> He is like the only person I used in Beef for Botticelli. Yeah, I think you love Eddie Murphy and Kenneth Monday? Monday sounds fantastic. His wife looks more like his daughter. What do you think of the house, Miss Evans? You can tell oh. he's a ghost because he has an English accent. I think never She's seen a ghost. Houses like this, or at least he's I a don't. ghost. Oh my god, he's the guy from Princess Bride. The or soon your fate will be the same. Oh Get no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Angie loved this movie. <laughs> I enjoyed that movie fine. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be from my memory of going to the cinema. I have never been to Disneyland so I don't know anything about the ride. I can't compare it to that. Um, but yeah, like I thought this had fun vibes. It was only like an hour and a half which is a serious plus for a movie. Uh, like plot wise... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what was going on. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I laughed. I liked all the ghosts. I'm into it. Probably not going to watch it again, but I had a good time. You know what? Archie's just gone. He's left me now. He finished that movie and was like, one's enough. He's gone to play Rust. I might just go straight in and watch another movie. What else are you going to do on a Saturday night when we're in a pandemic? Panini Nemic. Panana Nenemy. Pandemonium. Okay, next I'm going to watch, this movie is from 2000 and I've never heard of it before. It is also less than an hour and a half, fantastic. And it is called Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. Mom with an O. Mom. I never figure out how to pronounce it. I know it's not Mom. Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. Uh, I think that kid's holding garlic in the thumbnail. I'll show you. Vampire. Vam <laughs> vampire? Vampire? Vampire. <laughs> Let's just watch the movie. Remember when the internet took this long to load? Because I do. I was there. Look. That's a vampire. No, I think I think this guy is a vampire. Different guy. The other guy is maybe a vampire hunter. This is my theory. What accent? Can I take that as a yes? Oh, instantly my theory got confirmed. The other guy is a vampire hunter. <gasps> and that guy just turned into a bat and flew away. <laughs> Fuck me. My mom's going out with a vampire. There's a mark and I saw him turn into a bat. That child is literally the sweetest thing in the world. That was adorable. I loved that. What fun. It had Aunt Hilda. It had Lizzie McGuire's dad. It was just great fun. We'll put that on my list to watch every Halloween. So now I have to decide whether I should just push on through and watch number three. But I am feeling sleepy. But it is only 10pm. And all these movies do only seem to be like an hour and a half. So I could do it. If I do do it, I have a prediction. So, so far, both of these have followed the stereotype that we always see. The second someone in a mostly American cast movie speaks with an English accent, you know they are the villain. If it's a Halloween movie, you know that they are a ghost, as they were in the first movie, or a vampire, as they were in this one. 
my prediction will be that if someone in the next movie I watch speaks with an English accent, they will turn out to be a werewolf. So should I watch it right now? Let's see how long it is. It is an hour and 20 minutes. That's fantastic. I'm gonna watch it right now and then I will have smashed out all three. My question about this one is though, there is a series, the Halloween Town series. I haven't heard of this. And this is like number three. Do I need to have watched the first ones? Okay, we're going in, we're going in. If I get confused, I get confused. To be honest, I don't understand movies anyway, so this will be no different. It's starting. It's Ryan from High School Musical, I love that guy. Is that Kelsey from High School Musical? Am I watching High School Musical? Hi. It's a boy um, and she fancies okay. him. Go ahead, guys. Excuse me if you decide to go. Did this movie come out before or after High School Musical? Because they're all having a moment like going around saying the things they've always wanted to do, like how they come participate in school. And he's like, Ryan's character goes, you know, I've always wanted to be in a play. And bitch, you're gonna be. You're a troll. You're a big, big, furry troll. <laughs> You're a troll! You're a big pink furry troll! Remember ponchos? I thought it was the coolest girl in the world because I had a poncho. Look at that fashion icon. Oh, <laughs> she's gone. Queen. Poncho queen. I also had so many of those like thin colorful scarves that she's wearing. The fashion. The vibes. The love interest who looks just like Dean from Gilmore Girls. Impeccable. So based on that vlog, I once again changed my mind. I went full circle back to The Haunted Mansion being the lie because those second two movies that I'd never seen before were fucking ace. I am adding both of those to my like yearly Halloween rewatching, particularly Mum's Got a Day with a Vampire. That was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed both of those films. And The Haunted Mansion, to be honest, was crap. So I'm going back to that prediction. Okay, let's find out. Okay, let's do movies. I had The Haunted Mansion, Halloween Town High, and Mom's Got a Day with a Vampire. My favorites here are The Haunted Mansion movie and Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. I love these movies. I have not seen them in a long time, but I remember loving both of them. Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire is really quirky and fun. And then The Haunted Mansion movie, I just think is a, a great time. Halloween Town High. I'm a huge fan of Halloween Town 1 and Halloween Town 2. I love them for vibes. But this movie, I think it's kind of a mess and doesn't have the charm that the first two movies have. And I'm just not into it. I think the plot's pretty bad. I just, like, didn't care about the romance. I just didn't like it very much. So, there you go. Oh my god. That's so annoying. So my first reaction without having seen the movies was correct. But then I talked myself out of it. God damn. And I've never seen Halloween Town 1 and 2. So possibly if I saw those, I would then be able to see the contrast of this one like not being as good as the others. <sighs> That's so sad. That was the one category that I was convinced about. Like I texted Emma earlier on and said that I was slightly unsure on the books, slightly unsure on the songs, but 100% convinced on the movies. What do I know? Okay, we're gonna move quickly on to books. This is the video Emma sent me lying to my face about books. Now books. I went with YA books I loved as a teenager. First we have Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. This is a sort of magic school book. Um, loved it, thought it was so fun, ahead of its time in some ways, but also completely of its time in a lot of ways. Big fan, also so love Rachel Hawkins. And then I did The Agency by Y.S. Lee. I loved this series. It's like a Victorian mystery series. I thought it was so much fun and I really liked the main character as a teenager and then meant to be by Lauren Morell. This is a book that captured everything that I wanted as a teenager. It has like this girl going to London, obviously love London, and meeting a boy and falling in love and just doing all these things that I would have like died to do as a teenager. So those are the picks. I hope you can figure it out. So for this one, I really could not come up with an instant first prediction. The book set in London, that did sound the most like Emma telling the truth, because I know that she does love London and like would love traveling and all of that. So that one was my gut instinct that Emma was telling the truth. The first two, I really couldn't choose between at all. 
So, let's see what happened when I read the books. Okay, I'm entirely cheating and I'm starting a day early because Arthur and I just spent like two hours in the garden like weeding and sorting it out. It basically has been completely neglected since last summer and now I feel pretty gross. So I'm going to have a nice relaxing bath and I thought I'd start reading in the bath. Also, I went to figure out where to get all the books from and I had, for the first time ever I think, I actually was in luck with my Libby app. So my local library isn't the best, so usually I like never can find the books I want in stock or on the Libby app. I've sometimes found some in stock, I've never found any in the app. But two of the books that Emma set for me were in there, one on ebook and one on audiobook, so that's perfect. And then the third book is on script. So thank the Lord for nice free access to books through apps. I don't know which one to start with. I think I'm gonna have a bit of a rough week <laughs> with these. Like none of these books look like my kind of thing. Um, so I think it's gonna take a bit of pushing myself through. It's like 3.30 p.m. Is it too early for a glass of wine in the bath? Yeah, I think it's too early. I'll have a mug of tea in the bath. <laughs> Meant to be by Lauren Morrill. Emma got me this mug. I use it all the time. You've probably seen it in other vlogs, but it feels like particularly appropriate when I'm doing a collab with Emma. I'm gonna have to check that edit really carefully to make sure you aren't looking at my boobs. Chapter one. There's certain things in life that just suck. She's on a school trip. Let me guess, she's gonna get paired up with Jason, the guy that she hates, and they're gonna fall in love. Julia Lichtenstein, you'll be with Jason Lippincott. These are your temporary cell phones, or mobiles, as they say in England. No, we don't. Three things to tell you. Number one, the audiobook narrator pronounces the main character, Julia's name, Julia, every time, and it's funny. Second thing to say, I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, why is it so common in YA books for the main character to be like a complete goody goody? And I don't just mean like that they're not the most popular one, or they're shy or any of that. They, I so often come across characters who specifically are like, I would never break the rules. Like, why would I even want to go to a party? Like, ew, those girls are stupid. I would rather just stay at home and study for the SATs. Like, okay, that's fine. Write those characters sometimes. Those people exist. But why is it all of them? Surely that's not the most relatable character to exist. And thing number three... I went in the wrong order and now I'm swearing. Um, I never listen ever to audiobooks anything faster than normal speed, uh, but I am speeding this one up because <laughs> I'm bored. I don't want to listen to this for nine hours. Oh wow, I look special. I look like a tarantula. Uh, I'm going to keep listening to this book as I fall asleep. Does that count if I sleep through some of it? Hello, how creepy is this? I literally just picked up my camera to say, I think I hate this main character. She like thinks that she did really well in a debate there at the Tower of London and she's talking to the guy that we all know she's gonna end up with. And her argument, he's talking about like the terrible historical injustices of the people who were imprisoned in the Tower of London and the juxtaposition of that with like the fame of the Tower of London for the um, crown jewels being he held there. And like, he's making these intelligent points. And her argument is like, well, people should be punished if they break the rules uh, and the rules are created by society. And then he doesn't say anything. And she's like, oh my God, I won. <laughs> I won the debate. What the fuck lady? Okay, I finished Meant to Be. I thought it was really quite rubbish. <laughs> it was like, none of the characters were likeable in any way. The main character was very much not like other girls. And for a minute, I thought that she was going to like learn her lesson about that. Like learn that all these other girls that she hated also had like wonderful personalities of value of their own, but no, that's not where the story was going. Yeah, um, it was, <laughs> you know, it was what it was. So what I need to find out though from Emma if it's not cheating to ask, I think it's fine to ask, is whether she has reread these books as an adult. Because I wanna know whether I'm judging them based on like nostalgia vibes or what she thinks of them now. Because I feel like Emma now, if she read this now, would find it really irritating. Uh, probably because of the like, not like other girls thing first and foremost. Also there's like so many other little problematic bits. Whereas if I'm looking back to like preteen Emma, that would be very different. Possibly she would love this because I know that she 
does love like travel and this is a girl who gets to like go to London and explore and fall in love and so that seems like it would be something that she would like. I'm gonna ask her. Hello. I swear I'm always finding new ways to look ridiculous in these vlogs. Uh, so I haven't read anything all day. I'm now going to start. This is very bad sleep hygiene, but I the next book I want to read is on script, and so I can't get that on my Kindle or anything that's like better for late night reading. I'm just going to have to read it off this screen right here. <laughs> I could read it off my phone screen, but that would be just as bad. And also my phone is charging right now. What's this? We're going to read Hex Hall. Bloody hell! I didn't enjoy that last book but at least it was all set in the human world. I think this next book is gonna be even worse. I think all three books are gonna be a struggle for me. I'm not 100% sure if anything has happened in this book yet. <laughs> I'm like 50% of the way through. That's okay, I'm gonna keep reading on my lunch break now. This on my computer screen is not my favorite way to consume a book, but I'm not hating the book. I know I'm being sarcastic. I don't think anything's happened, but I'm like gently enjoying it. To be honest, if I'm being honest with myself, I now remember that last night I kept thinking I was going to finish reading, so I was like, I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. But every time I got to the end of the chapter, I was like, mm, okay, just one more chapter. Partly because the chapters are very short, and I feel like that does encourage you to keep reading, but also like, I must be interested enough, invested enough in this book. I'm just lying to myself at this point. And we've got drama, the drama is kicking off, plus we have the introduction of a new hot guy. Always fun. Hippo's reading along with me. <laughs> what do you think it is? How has she gone from having a crush to being in love in the space of two seconds? <sighs> I hate teenagers. This main character also just sucks. Okay, so I have a prediction about this book and I guess this will count as a spoiler because I will then find out whether I'm right or not. So if you don't want spoilers, then just like skip forward like 30 seconds. But I doubt there are too many viewers of this channel who don't want spoilers for Hex Hall. So my prediction is Rachel, no, Rachel's the author. What's her main character called? Sophie, our main character who is supposedly a witch. Have I told you anything about this book? It's about a witch school, like a magic school. Uh, there's vampires and fairies and Sophie is a witch. My prediction is that she's not actually a witch, she's a demon. I think she might be a demon. Oh my god, queen of guessing plot points. She's a demon bitch! Okay, it just finished very abruptly, very much on the note of this is a fairly long series and that was just book number one. I won't be continuing, but it was pretty fun. Okay, I guess I should read this last fucking book. I realised I've been completely putting it off, and in fact I realised I've been putting off the books, like, in order of how much I think I won't like them. So I started by reading the YA romance, which isn't my favourite genre, but it's like a genre that I'm not going to struggle through. But, funny enough, I liked that book the least. Then I went for the YA fantasy, which I was really dreading, and actually didn't really have to push myself through it. I found it fun. So finally, the one I've been dreading the most, the genre I am the least inclined to pick up, is YA historical fiction. This book is set in, hang on, let me find it. Yeah, I have literally opened this book on the Libby app twice and seen it say prologue August 1853 and then put it right down again. <laughs> but if the pattern continues, maybe this one will surprise me even more and I'll love it the most. Having a great Friday so far. So just got out of a two hour meeting with Stonewall, I'm doing some work with them at the moment at work, but like helping our company become even more LGBTQA plus friendly. So that was a really like fun, hopeful, optimistic meeting. Came out of that and discovered that the amazing angel, Leanne, you may know her from Literary Diversions fame, she and I pretend to be enemies on the internet, but actually she's a goddess because she's sent me brownies. Look how good this looks. I'm gonna sit here and eat this right now. I want to take Hippo for a walk and read the book when it's raining. So an audiobook would be perfect right now because then I could just like have my hood up. I have been trying for the last like hour and a half <laughs> to try and get an audiobook. It's not available on any of the services, like the subscription services I'm already signed up for. I would pay for it at this point, but like I can't seem to find it on any website. Noah will let me buy it. I even like changed my audible settings to make it look like I was in the US and it still didn't let me get it. Even though I thought it was available on the US, I think maybe I didn't change the settings right and I like, knew that I was lying. <sighs> Just want to listen to the audiobook. This is May. Oh my 
god, then you just love Sama. I'm like unimaginably bored by this book. <laughs> I can see exactly why it would appeal. I think probably this is going to be one that Emma did like. It's like, it's historical fiction, which I don't like. It's spies, which I don't like. But loads of people like both of those things. And I can see that it's going to be like very feminist in that way. Like, it's all badass women defying stereotypes. That's fun. I think, I think that I can see why Emma would like that. But now that I've decided that, do I still have to read the whole thing? Because <laughs> I'm so bored. Well, it is 4pm and I am fully like in my pajamas with my hair up in dressing gown curls. <laughs> this is Friday now. I have actually just given myself a headache from singing so loudly and for so long. <laughs> I started playing a playlist that was like Disney and songs from musicals when I was in the shower and then I just suddenly I was like on the West End stage and so I stayed listening to it with like the volume all the way up in my airpods the whole way through drying my hair. I was belting, belting it out. I must say in my head it sounded fantastic. RG shut the door at me so I think maybe it didn't sound that good in real life but now my head hurts, so I'm going to sit down and read this body book. There are discussions of xenophobia and racism in this book, like in England at the time, which is pretty cool to have that acknowledged. It, the book is written by a Singaporean author, I believe. Uh, hang on. Let me Google before I tell you shit I don't know. Yeah, she's Singaporean-Canadian and she lived in England for a while, so that's why she's writing this book, set in 1850s London. Uh, and the main character is, I think, biracial we don't know very much yet but like she gets judged for looking exotic um so it's pretty cool like I don't remember reading books as a teenager that acknowledged that Britain is such a racist country or really that acknowledged racism at all so that is obviously a massive plus I still don't like spies though honestly every single piece of dialogue in this book is just like let's explain to the reader what the plot is now it's so boring oh that hurt <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. But I don't really have this. Sometimes I forget that my hair is up like this while I'm vlogging. <laughs> and I catch a little glimpse of myself in the viewfinder and I'm like, wow. I've been trying to be serious, talk about my feelings, and I look like Princess Leia. If I have to keep reading the rest of this book, I'm going to fall into a reading slump so deep I may never be able to claw my way out of it. I really don't like plot driven books they make me bored because I really struggle to actually follow plots <laughs> so when a book is all plot it's like it's like I'm just staring at the page I feel nauseous <laughs> I feel travel sick from just like staring at words on a page that don't mean anything to me here's the thing I feel like I already have a conclusion on this book I think that teenage Emma loved it because Emma doesn't have the problem that I have with following plots because she's a more you know intelligent human being who can understand what's going on in a book and I feel like teenage Emma would have really enjoyed that this is a feminist book it does address women's roles in society it does address sex work it addresses slavery it addresses racism in Britain like it is it's impressive. I like what it's doing. She said in her video that she described this book as a lot of fun and that she liked the main character. And sure, it probably is a lot of fun if you like books about spies. But I am just not interested. I don't even remember what her mission is. Have we been told what her mission is? I honestly couldn't tell you have we been told what her mission is. And I don't actually care what her mission is. <sighs> you know what? You know what? I've identified the problem. I am just really tired right now. I have not had enough sleep the last two nights and it is making me cranky and I don't want to read the book right now. So I'm going to stop reading it for tonight. I'm going to go back to watching High School Musical, the musical the series, which is where my heart really belongs right now. And I can just start reading again tomorrow. I think it will feel less draining on my entire life <laughs> when I'm a little bit less overtired. Okay, so here is where I have to make a confession. After that last clip, I never picked the book up again. I really, really did intend to, I promise. But the days just kept going past and I just kept 
not picking it up and eventually I had to confront myself and realise I'm never going to pick it up. So I'm so sorry Emma that I did slightly cheat at this challenge but we're even because she DNF'd a book once, I DNF'd this one and I'm still going to make my prediction based on what I read of it. And even up until this moment in time, I still have not decided what my prediction actually is. The only thing I feel sure about is, I'm pretty certain, fingers crossed, that Emma would have loved Hex Hall. Because I think that what she said in her video was absolutely accurate. It was ahead of its time and yet perfectly of its time as well. Like, that sums it up so well. It was exactly the type of book that we were all reading at that time. It had all of the tropes that now are, like, pretty cliched and a little tired, but at the time were exactly what we wanted, but also was fairly progressive for its time. So yeah, I thought that one was a good time. I know I complained about reading it and said I was a little bored, but I did think it was a good time and I can't see any reason why Teenage Emma wouldn't have loved that one. I am going to predict that Emma is lying when she said that she liked Meant To Be. Because I think that Teenage Emma was switched on enough to really not enjoy the not like other girls nature of the book and also the fact that the love interest is just kind of a douche like repeatedly throughout. I think that's the kind of thing that would have annoyed her. If I'm wrong, I'm quitting booktube. Hexhall by Rachel Hawkins. Big fan of this book, big fan of this series. I hope that was obvious. I, I love it. I think this is probably the most obvious one, but big, big fan. Also love The Agency by Y.S. Lee. This is one of my favorite historical fiction series. I just think it's really, really interesting and I love the romance in it. At least I did when I was a teenager. And I hate men to be. When this book came out, I got it from my library at high school and I read it and I remember raging to my mom and my sister about how much I hated this book and how dumb I thought it was and how like annoying the characters and how badly written it was. It was one of the first books I remember rage reading Goodreads reviews of to find people who understood why I hated it. So I hope that you figured this out. This was so much fun. I don't know, I haven't started it yet, but I feel like it was probably so much fun. <sighs> All right. I am so pleased with myself. Also, side note, can you hear the rain outside? It has just suddenly in the last like 10 seconds become completely torrential. I don't know if you can hear that. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I am thrilled with that result. I didn't get three out of three. I don't think I've ever got three out of three, but I did get two out of three. Oh, hi, Hippo. You not enjoying the rain, baby? It's okay. Emma, that was a fantastic round, thanks for that. Uh, honestly, that evening that I spent watching all of the Halloween Disney Plus movies was a wild time, so can't complain. Even if I did nearly get into a reading slump so severe that I had to quit my job in publishing, sell all my books and move country, I think we just about crawled our way out of that one. So I'm really excited to see how Emma did, I don't know yet, but as I said, I will link below to her video over on her channel where I lied shamelessly to her and let's see if she could figure it out. I think I'm a really good liar. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her.